Okay, I'm still trying to figure out this camera. It just stopped. It said I'd used up my space on my memory card, which frankly, I used it for 50 videos. It's probably pretty worn out. But here I am recording again. But I was at, I had finished the chapter long ago, and I was just talking in generalities. But the, uh, The covenant, the other covenant is the covenant of friendship that comes from Moshe, which the rabbi should not want <laughs> to come at all. Because when Moshe acts here, God has a reckoning and dismisses them. He doesn't recognize a rabbi on the face of the earth. And he appoints me, Moshe, his servant David, a shepherd, a teacher. Is the only shepherd he recognizes. I, I know I've already mentioned this. The only way you're going to come out of this, uh, Rabbi, is you're going to have to get a little bit humble and go to your people and say, guess what? Isaiah 53 is not Israel. And there's some other mistakes Judaism has made. Things we just couldn't see in the scripture, but there's somebody here today that can. And think about that. It's a proof. You know, the proof is, prophet like Moses, I got two books he dictated to me, read them. They're online. It's scripture, it's modern scripture. It's not like reading the Bible. I'll give you that. It's not antiquity in the Middle Ages. But uh, it's definitely, it's divinely received. That's what scripture is. You know, Keith, write this down. You know. Every word, sentence, paragraph, page, chapter, uh, and uh, what is uh, what is, uh, the title? So the covenant of friendship. So that's not the one that you desire. It, I mean, it's great because that's where he says, "I am going to place my temple amongst you." Okay, now. In Malachi 3, he says, I'm going to return to my temple. But if he's here, then that means the covenant of friendship's here, and he's going to place it there. Well, he's going to use me. He's got to have a man to get the third temple built. And if I get the books published, the Jewish people become a holy seed, just like the exiles. And you have to do it. If you build it, and he calls it his eternal temple. You'll never be defeated, dispersed again. Now, that doesn't mean you, might, you won't have wars. You just won't be defeated and dispersed. Don't build it. When he does come, and I guess what he's saying there is, uh, if I say you're not going to build it, you know, I'll just leave. If you're not going to listen to my prophet who I speak through, I'll just leave. And eventually, my creation will destroy you. Utter destruction to the land of Israel. Build it, never defeat it. Don't build it, utter destruction to the land. There's 7 million or so Israeli Jews right now. Now, that ought to ring a bell with every Jewish person. 7 million. Well, what do you think utter destruction to the land is going to do? It's going to kill at least six million. Never again and never forget. But you know what your rabbis also do? They teach you, teach you to throw that out the window. Because they'll tell you, the world's going to exalt the Jew. Well, that's not in the Hebrew Bible. No. Rambam did that. Rambam says that. They teach God's, man's word over God's word all the time. And if you think that doesn't infuriate him... You don't know God. Messianic era. <laughs> That's not in the Hebrew Bible. But I tell you, and it's in some of these chapters. You've got to read Rambam's rendition of what the Messianic era is. It's flat scary to me. The whole world will be to know and worship God. That's it. Everything else, there'll be no pain. You know, me, I'm a striver. I, you know, I want to move that mountain that can't be moved. I got to make, I, I have to be, you know, make myself feel like I'm doing something. 
And of course, I'm in the middle of doing the biggest thing that any man's been involved with in a long time. A real long time, probably. I guess most. But, uh, or, or I suppose David and Solomon building the first temple. But, uh, the covenant that you desire, sin forgiveness, Jeremiah 31, that writes Torah on your heart. Basically, you write the Torah on your heart because now you know in heaven everything, it's a Jewish heaven. God controls your mind. He's the information of your mind. It's going to be all Jewish. You want to get in there and start studying. Read the Bible. Yeah, read the family. Read about the history of the Jewish people. Famous Jewish people. Jewish food. How to cook Jewish food. Anything Jewish. And the more you know, the greater your eternal existence in heaven will be. I even know <laughs> what the rooms look like. Yeah, you, by the way, you'll feel like you're in body. I don't know exactly what that means. It's just he has shown me what it is to be in a vision where your spirit, and that's scary. You know, I'm just talking to him after a, a going for a run in a park. By the way, this cuts off. I don't really have anything interesting to say. I'm just uh, chit chatting, I suppose. And I'm <laughs> and we're, I'm under a shade tree. Uh, having some water, and uh, he just talked to me. He gave me no warning. Suddenly, I am in the deepest recesses of outer space, and it is glorious. I mean, I, I don't know if it's real outer space or the whole thing was in, I, I guess it was in my mind, because I mean, I'm still sitting by the tree. Um, but if it was what really is going on in outer space or whether he was beefing it up a little bit, but it was incredible. And then I looked down and I realized I didn't have legs. And then I didn't have arms. I was invisible to myself. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's just laughing because he can't see himself either. <laughs> yeah. Um... Now, God God can put a perception in my mind. And he does it all the time, all day long. I get pictures in my mind. I call them picture vision. You can wide awake. Um, but he had this caricature. You know, where they draw at a theme park or something. You. But you look, you know, a lot different. A caricature... Of the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. The character. This is, this is a little guy about this big. And he's in this room. He's walking around. I'm laying in bed and I roll over. And he's just standing in my bed looking at me. Now they're putting this into my mind. So what I'm telling you is we had a lot, I've had a lot of fun. I've been to an awful ordeal. Uh, and I'm still in it. It's not over. Uh, it looks like it's lightened up a little bit. Thank the heavens. But... Um, I have also, in this 16 years, laughed more, primarily because of the Spirit. But God can be very humorous, too. Um, then I have the, uh, the entirety of the rest of my life. I, I was not somebody who laughed. I was very serious all the time. Very serious person. And uh, <laughs> now I laugh a lot. It's just, again, changing my personality in the fire of refinement. A fury, serious. Uh, somebody who would fight the drop of a hat. Uh, even with my bad, uh, my affliction by God. Which, again, God has never afflicted the Jewish people. Afflicted. Made them, had them be born blind, lame, crippled disfigured, you know, back in antiquity. David would have nothing to do with those people because it meant God, if you were disfigured, God didn't like you. If you were blind, God didn't like you. So he would just stay away from them. Now, there are people who still believe in that, but it's not like it was when the Bible was, the scrolls were being written. Yeah, it's pretty awful time back then. I certainly wouldn't have lived back then. 
but uh, <laughs> who cares? He didn't. He, he didn't really show him that much anymore. It was really my early first five years or so. Um, so anyway, that's all I had to say. Except somebody's got to help me get these books published so I can get royalties generated. You're talking about two years at a minimum. It took a year to get it on shelves, but I can keep posting and doing videos over and over again. Um, and, and believe me, the viewers, I got over 15,000 this month. And for me, you know, I'm not a radio show host. I'm not, I'm not Jewish. I'm not in Israel. Uh, and I'm not supposed to be Jewish. See, Jesus and his cousin, John the Baptist, who he said was Elijah, he can't be Elijah who was a Gentile, and Jesus, Jesus can't be the man of Isaiah 53, God's righteous servant, because he's a Jew. No, it's a Gentile, and it's in there, believe me, God comes from Adam. Adam means Gentile lands, founded by the children of a saw. A saw never married a Jewish woman. All of his kids were Gentiles, and they founded Adam kind of deep down in uh, Judah, towards Egypt, I guess it was. Um, and, and there was antagonism between uh, the Jewish people, the Israelites, the exiles, all of them, and Adam, who is said to have taken, uh, gotten in on the action to destroy the, uh, the first, uh, yeah, the first temple. So, he comes from Adam, and it flat out says it in 63. And of the people, that's his people, that's you Jewish people, and of the people, none are with me. Well, he's not coming back without his prophet like Moses. He's got to have a visible representation. That's what 53 is for. It's for the day of the Lord when he has to get things done. He just, he just said, yeah, I know, <laughs> after they finally returned. And that's all you had to do. It's not about being sinless. I mean, he sent it in a covenant of sin forgiveness. Doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just, hey, come back, cultivate the land, make it beautiful again, rebuild the city, and I'll come back. It's that simple. And it's happened. Cities rebuilt, land blooms again, time for a new covenant. You can only find it on Malachi 3. The angel of the covenant you desire is already on its way. Now, sin forgiveness. And that also means covenant friendship. Your holy seed, covenant friendship, said in place in my temple amongst you. I, I, I should think all religious uh, observant uh, Jewish people would love to have a temple that where you strongly believe the actual presence of God and together with the presence of his angel, the Holy Spirit, you're talking about the Shekinah residing in there eternally until all things end for whatever reason. So, but, yeah, the rabbis, I'm sure, don't want to talk to me since I'm the guy that says... Uh, you may not know this, but you've been dismissed, and I'm the only guy he recognizes as a teacher, and what I teach is the books, and I'm doing it right now. And that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to get humble, go to their flocks. You know, Toby Singer's got 46,000 followers. He's got to go to him, and I don't think he can do it. I don't think he's as humble as he tries to act. That's why. <laughs> pompous is closer to it than arrogant. But uh, thinks he knows everything. But you go read what he says in Isaiah 53. Believe me, it's, oh, God put it in the book <laughs> about his uh, commentary on 53.10. It's an absolute absurdity and, and quite literally, it's just a joke that he would uh, he doesn't even sum it up. This is why it's Israel. Go ask him. Tell me exactly why. 53 is Israel. You know, you got to have everybody together. He uses the Holocaust, but the man of Isaiah 53 is exposed to death. Crushed with disease, exposed to death, 
the given long line. Now, that's me. Now, I can document that by medical records. Uh, it'd be hard to find somebody that had stage four lung cancer, never was treated, given about one month to live, for 22 years, <laughs> I think it's been 22 years, is whenever the planes hit New York, all this cancer stuff was happening, and hadn't seen a doctor since. And I became a triathlete running half Ironman distances for about two or three years. But uh, thank you for listening to me.